I will come now to the third uh, paper, which is uh, also uh, with a group of only two now uh, authors, Eduard Kozhocha and Trena Rebeda. Uh, it is, uh, the paper is called uh, Exploring a Large data, data Set of Educational Videos Using Object Detection Analysis. So it's now uh, from another uh, interesting domain. So uh, Edward Kojocha will uh, present uh, the paper. Yes, we see the screen. So you have the screen, uh, and, uh, the virtual floor, <laughs> Edward. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Edward Kojocha and I wrote uh, this paper together with uh, Trayan Rebeda, which is uh, a continuation of our previous paper from last year. Uh, where we explored the data set uh, by detecting persons. And now we said, uh, what other objects could be relevant to be detected in these videos? And what other insights can we, could we extract by you doing this? So uh, the motivation for doing uh, our research is that um, the educational process arguably is the one of the most important things in human society. A good educational process can lead to good anything else. So analyzing and um, understanding how this process is being done is important. Um, most of the research until recently was focused on text, text data. And this was uh, due mainly to the fact that only recently uh, video processing uh, methods, algorithms have been uh, reliably uh, both in performance and speed. Um, so until recently, only sparse research has been done regarding video data. And uh, another motivation was to continue and extend our previous, uh, our research from the previous year. And as I said, these days, uh, video analysis is plausible because we had a significant increase in speed and performance of the algorithms, but we also had uh, a significantly increase in um, hardware comput computational uh, power. So it's a combination of facts and also the hardware is much cheaper these days than it was 10 years or 20 years ago. So basically, since 2012, since uh, AlexNet, uh the computer vision uh, field has exploded in methods algorithms and so on also another important thing is the data sets since today we have our social media and not only it's full of videos so now we have lots of uh, data sets to analyze as a related work we have a few papers that uh, uh, focused on video analyt analytics in the recent years. Two of them, which were in the last uh, two years, wh which uh, were predicting vi video segments based on audio, video, and text. And um, another one, which was predicting uh, the, the climate of uh, a school classroom, if it was positive or negative. Um, for object detection, as we know, we have uh, very popular, the RCNN family with uh, um, fast, fast, faster, and mask RCNN, uh, which are uh, high performance but tend to be slower than the other uh, very popular family, YOLO, which is uh, generally faster. Um, we last last year we used YOLO V3, and uh, we know that YOLO V4 is still is now much better than YOLO v3, but we used uh, YOLO v3 uh, this, this year as well to have the same standard compare in comparison to the last year. Um, so what we did is uh, we took uh, from using U YouTube ATEM, a uh, data set of videos from YouTube, we searched for videos with the school tag. And of course, we could uh, extend the search with uh, high school, college, and other tags but we took just school as uh, to be more general. And um, there were uh, almost 8,000 videos available. 
um, and we had the uh, we have to filter these videos because we needed the videos to have a, at least HD quality and to be at least 24 FPS. There were lots of videos with very poor quality or uh, which were broken for some reason. And um, in order to be able to make a good comparison between these videos, we extracted the, uh, an approximately two minutes long subsection from the middle in order to avoid any intro and outro scenes from the videos. So basically to have the, um, the essence of the video, which is most likely to be in the middle of the video. Um, also, we wanted the videos to be uh, of a similar length because we are count we counted the persons last year, so it was important to be similar in size. And also another uh, more uh, more um, earthly thing it was that we had to have a reasonable computational cost since we could not uh, wait uh, for three months just to process all the videos in full size. Um, so we used the v 3 and uh, we excluded the person because we did the, we already did the persons and we just detected um, from the 80 classes that YOLO v3 uh, makes available, we chose only um, some classes which could be uh, relevant for school. For example, we have transport where we have bicycle, car, motorbike, bus. It could be, uh, which represent the means of transport for children and students to and from the school. Uh, we have food because you know, most schools have cafeterias. So we have all the foods that uh, YOLO is capable of detecting. Uh, also, uh, we have the category eating, which uh, implies to um, objects uh, necessary for eating like a, um, a fork, a knife, a bowl, a bottle. Uh, these categories are custom made, they're not from YOLO. Uh, then we have furniture, which is chair, sofa, dining table, bench. Uh, sports, which includes sports uh, equipment like sports ball, baseball glove, and so on. Uh, luggage, which uh, means backpack, handbag, suitcases, umbrella, and so on. And uh, we have also study objects, which are uh, objects relevant to study, like a laptop, mouse, uh, uh, book, scissors, and so on. Uh, here are a, a few examples of uh, detections from uh, the videos. We can see that uh, in, uh, in a classroom uh, setup, we have very uh, many detections, but, as but also we have missed detections since uh, the objects are crowded and YOLO struggles with crowded objects. Uh, but for our research, we don't, we don't need to know the exact number of objects or the exact position. We, we need to know the general picture of the video. So we could have relevant detections like you have on the left image where you detect a sink and in a school, uh, in a school setup, a sink might mean a, a toilet or a chemistry class. So using this insight and combining it with other detections, we could uh, refine to understand what happens in that scene. Uh, in the other two, we have detections from classrooms with people, and we see on the right, where is the Aula de Informatica, so the informatics classroom, where we have TV monitors, laptops, and other uh, related objects detected. Um, oh, another important thing to, to mention is that last year, we counted the unique number of people, so we did object detection and tracking, but this year we didn't do tracking on objects. We just counted the number of detections. Um, so we did, uh, cl we clustered the data that we gathered and we clustered the videos based on the number of detections of certain objects. And uh, as I said, the number of detections is not representative to the exact number or, or approximate number of objects. For example, if you have a clock 
and is visible the whole duration, you could have like thousands of detections for the clock. But this is not a problem for us because uh, we want to know which objects are dominant, which are objects are present throughout the video. It doesn't matter if there are uh, one clock, two clocks, or a thousand clocks. If the clock is present during the whole video, it means that it is an important feature of that video. Okay, so the results. We grouped the data uh, by the dominant object and we see that chair is the most uh, encountered object in the videos, which is to be expected from a school setup. Then we have a book also uh, expected. And then we have tie. So this here is an indication that the school uses uniforms. Um, and so on, we could take uh, every video with its corresponding dominant object and make assumptions about what uh, the video is about. Uh, then we took, uh, we grouped the videos based on the top three detections. And we see that the most uh, 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 present three uh, groups of objects is car, uh, car chair, dining table. Um, also we have book, chair, tie here which represents which represents a school with uniform. Um, if you have uh, a chair with a cup and a dining table, it means it's a scene from the cafeteria and so on. Uh, then we grouped uh, the videos just based on the category from uh, the, the dominant object category. And we see that furniture is the top category and it is to be expected since tables and chairs are everywhere in the school, even in a sports events, there are lots of chairs and even tables. Uh, then we have study objects and then we have the other uh, categories. Um, and then we grouped by based on the top three object categories, uh, which uh, the most uh, encountered uh, combination is luggage, study object, and transport. Luggage and study object are to be expected, but transport is a weird uh, appearance here. But I think that the, but the, mo the most weight in these detections are is done by luggage and study objects. And the transport, like car, bus, it means that we have videos uh, uh, taking. That, that job, excuse me, you have only three minutes left. Okay. Uh, then we have footage from uh, the parking lot of the school or have scenes from how children are uh, brought to or from the school. Um, okay, so then we cluster the videos by chair detections. And we had two clusters using MinShift. And the first uh, cluster, which is less than uh, 3,060, uh, 600 uh, detections, uh, we see that we have the cluster which contains mainly classroom or cafeteria and uh, the second cluster mostly contains sports and music events where there are plenty of chairs visible throughout the scene. Uh, then we did it uh, by the book detections and the first cluster with, with less than 3000 detections usually meant classrooms where books were visible but were not necessarily the dominant object since we have also have tables tv monitors and other objects uh, then we had the second uh, from 3000 to 7000 we have uh, commercials school commercials there were many school commercials in these videos and more than uh, 7000 we have a single person presenting school, school equipment where a book is visible in the screen throughout the whole video. So we have very, very many detections of the books. Uh, then we did some clustering regarding how chairs and books go together. And we see that there are 10 clusters detected. Um, this uh, <laughs> requires further exploration. Um, and also we uh, compared persons versus books and persons versus chairs, but we see that uh, the persons are on the X axis. The, per the number of persons don't uh, influence the number of clusters, only the variation of books and chairs influence the 
number of cluster, the clusters. So the conclusion is that this is an incipient analysis, but can be used to uh, filter videos in order for some, someone to manually analyze videos, but he wouldn't have to analyze 2000, he could analyze 100 videos, which, is, uh, which will be helpful and um, can be further improved for automatic anal analysis of videos. Thank you, if you have any questions. Thank you, please, uh, questions. There's an interesting paper. Yes, I, I have a, a couple of questions. Okay. Um, the first one is uh, maybe trivial, but just, uh, did you check that indeed uh, the two minions in the center of the movie are the most relevant one because, of course, uh, as you know, you may organize uh, the plot of the video in many different ways. So, uh, just to know if by chance uh, you check that this is uh, actually the most relevant uh, uh, section of the video. And the second one is uh, uh, that's very interesting work on uh, filtering and recognizing the, the video. And uh, I'm wondering uh, uh, how you think to use uh, uh, your approach to support the learning. I mean, uh, up to now you can recognize the environment, uh, but from there, where you think to go in order to support uh, learning? Okay. So uh, for the first question, uh, obviously we couldn't, we, did, we, we didn't have the time to check all the videos, but we took a couple of uh, a few tens of videos to see uh, if the uh, middle section of two minutes is relevant. And uh, there were a couple of videos which weren't, but there were sporting events with cutscenes and the cutscenes were everywhere. So no matter where we cut, the same thing would have happened. Um, so this was an insight and about that the, the two minutes and then we checked and it seemed to be relevant for our analysis. Of course, it could be extended for longer, for 10 minutes, half an hour and so on. We just had to do it for brevity. And uh, the second one is that uh, for the second question, um, what I think about is that there have to be some educational experts which need to analyze um, school uh, uh, classes, right? Like in chemistry, in informatics, and so on. And if you have a very large data set of these videos, which are not necessarily labeled, but you want to see how this process is done in various countries and so on, when you have a large data set, uh, these kind of research can help you filter the, the number of videos and give you only uh, scenes with uh, chemistry classes. So the expert can come and manually analyze the videos uh, done uh, for uh, the videos filtered. Um, I think it could be done in conjunction with other research in order to uh, improve uh, the educational process, but uh, this is what uh, we had in mind. Uh, to be a useful tool to explore uh, a large data set of videos and to filter out only possible relevant videos for your uh, research. Uh, other, uh, other things could be, for example, in sports, where uh, sport trainers would like to see how uh, various sports are played in various uh, countries. And you could filter out by uh, the videos with many persons, with many chairs and sporting uh, equipment. Okay, okay. thanks. Thank you. Uh, we have time for uh, one or two short questions and answers. I have one really small question. Uh, were there any objects that you discovered are uh, as having an affinity for being easier or harder to be detected? Or you didn't notice such cases? The small objects are harder mm -hmm. to be detected or the crowded objects. Mm -hmm. Even if there are people, if there is a crowd of 30 people, it would most likely detect like 20 of them. Mm -hmm.